guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a roundup and revisit of things that I bought in 2019. However, uh, 2019 was a bit of a no buy year for me. That wasn't exactly like intentional. Um, 2019 was a pretty interesting year is all I'm gonna say on that. But um, there were a couple of things that I purchased that I wanna update you guys on. And also a reveal of what I got myself for my birthday. 2018, I feel like I went crazy and actually a couple of the pieces that I'm gonna be talking about today were purchased in 2018, but I am just doing sort of a revisit on the last luxury goods that I bought. Um, 2019 was pretty dry as far as, you know, new luxury pieces go. So since I didn't buy a ton in 2019 period, I am just going to revisit and update you guys on some of the last pieces that I did add to my collection. So I have this going from most recent to least recent. So I have this going from newest and most recent to oldest. And the most recent luxury purchase were these. These, are, these were my holy grail shoes, I think. These are the Isabel Morant Carol sandal. Um, so these were a huge blogger trend circa 2013 and I wanted them from the moment I saw them for the first time. Um, the release of these kind of coincided with me entering into the world of luxury for the first time. They were so, I'm gonna put one down, impossible to get my hands on. And what I can say is that I do still love them. I wear them pretty regularly. They're pretty comfortable. I mean, this little toe strap isn't the best the best, but it's a very cute shoe and I find it very easy to wear and add to my wardrobe. The only thing is that I'm super disappointed <sighs> after five years of stalking these shoes on the internet and finally finding them and wearing them and just being the most contented and jubilant I think I've ever been. The freaking quality on these, I'm gonna say sucks. The leather is good and it's high quality. The studding is nice, the insole is great. And you can just see from the bottom soles here that I haven't worn them a ton. Um, and they weren't worn a lot when I received them myself, so you can tell that they haven't been like, like no one's hiked up the side of a mountain in these shoes. But what you are able to see is that the sole is split. I hope you guys can see that this. So the sole on these is splitting from the bottom sole right here. But when I think about how these were like, you know, probably like, eight or nine hundred dollar shoes in 2013 and how I paid I mean not that much but a decent amount of money for them <sighs> it's really really disappointing I love these shoes I think they're really cute I mean honestly I do think this is this is something a cobbler will be able to fix with no issue but I have shoes from Steve Madden that I've worn the hell out of over the course of years that aren't be in better shape than these are right now but I do still love these. They're just so perfect. I'm gonna, like, yeah, I'm gonna have to go take them into my cobbler to get them fixed, but you may remember all the drama I've had with designer shoes and cobblers over the course of the last few years. I'm not excited about this. Okay, next we have an absolute 2019 staple. I'm talking about my Dior mirrored Stellaire sunglasses, you guys. I have struggled to put on a single other, a single solitary other pair of sunglasses for the entire year since I bought these. Um, I can't recommend them enough. Like this shape should pretty much work on most people, I feel like, and I think they're they're big, they're the right size. I love that they're mirrored. I just love that they're square. You know, they mix the they mix metals. The, the frames are are gold, and the um the mirrored lenses are silver. I have like a little drawer in my entryway of all of my sunglasses, and these are out in front. And like legitimately, I can't. It's been hard for me to not wear these if I'm wearing sunglasses. I did buy these pre-loved, and I always do recommend buying pre-loved, but. Now that I see how much I've worn these over the course of the last year, I definitely could have justified buying them at full price, which is probably like four or five hundred dollars. I've worn them almost every day for an entire year, and I yet um, like this shape. I don't think I'll ever get sick of. So this was definitely a win for my last set of purchases. Next purchase we're following up on is my Louis Vuitton Rabat Clay. You guys know this was my holy grail of wallets. I had one, it was my first designer wallet, it got stolen. I replaced it last year 
and literally I have used it two times in a year. Don't even think about it. I'm never selling this thing. I might actually have it buried with me when I die. I, for one, I have the Jean wallet. Um, I've talked your ears off about the Jean wallet. I'm not even gonna pull it out, but you know, you know how much I love that thing. Um, it definitely takes the place of having a mid-size wallet. I'm in the process right now of designing and ordering business cards for myself, and that is what I will be using this for. I plan to. So 2019 was not its year. 2019 was the year that the Robot Clay made it into my life, and 2020 will probably be the year that I use it. Next up on our list is a bag that you guys have seen. I have talked your ears off about this, the Givenchy Mini Antigona. Obviously this was not purchased in 2019, this was purchased in 2018, but I'm just going through like my last set of, like my last purchases. And I did just do an updated review on this, so this is me telling you that I'm not gonna talk about it in this video if you wanna hear about it. I'll leave my, um, my one year wear and tear review down below. You guys can check out that video. I go on and on and on about how great this bag is, and I, so I won't have to do it here. I'm done talking about it. If you wanna know about it, go check out, go check out my last video. And last on our list is my Gucci Marmot clutch. Um, right now I am sort of trying out things because I have another video coming up on how to mix logos and that's what I'm doing right here. Um, but when I was doing my video on the 2010, uh, 2010s Decade in Review, um, I really sort of started thinking about the Gucci Marmont and how people are now saying that it's on its way out. And I think the flap style of the bag potentially could be. With the softness of this leather, I do think that maybe the flap bag might not have been the best shape and design for it because when you see some of them on the pre-loaf market, they do look a little bit worse for wear a lot of the time um, because it is a very soft and smushy leather, which is why it's perfect in this type of capacity. This is a very weird, quirky bag. Um, it has two zipper compartments and a really weird shoulder strap and like magnetic, like, there's nothing that makes sense about this bag at all, but I wear it all the time and I absolutely love it. Something about it just screams me. And I really liked the aesthetic of the Marmont line, but I do think that it was much better for me at least to get something that was a little bit different that took the, some of the design features and made a different look. This I don't see going out of style in the way that the flat bags and the belts and everything were. Um, however, that said, you guys know I don't give two f**ks about trends. So wh whether or not something is on trend, once again, is kind of irrelevant to me. I just buy what I like. This bag I use all the time. It's great for evening and I'm actually trying, it's mostly an evening bag and I'm not doing like a ton. I haven't been doing like a ton of like evening-y type stuff lately but it is a bag that i can just grab and go uh definitely one that i'm very happy that i bought and it gets it gets its fair amount of wear this was a great purchase great great purchase and i'm very very happy that i have it one thing though that i definitely will say about 2019 is that i mean i wasn't shopping for you know other reasons that were you know within my own lifestyle and capacity at the point, but there wasn't anything I felt like I was missing out on. Um, for one, I'm at a great place in my collection where I'm, I don't feel like I need, I really am missing or need anything. And number two, and I have not made this a secret, um, I didn't like the, I didn't like the new styles and there was just nothing I felt like I needed to have. So, Definitely this past year has made me really really appreciate the things that I do have in my collection um, I think that My collect my my wardrobe bag wise is, is in a really great place Honestly clothing I am kind of bored with a lot of my clothes and I'm really res resisting the urge to just go out and buy a whole bunch of crap That being said I did find myself a pair of shoes that I bought for my birthday and they are these right here Yes I love these so much. So these are Givenchy. They are a pair of wooden like clog sandals in black leather. And I will say it has been near impossible for me to like really add these, like really mesh these well into my wardrobe. They're very, very hard for me to wear. Um, 
Couple of notes first. Uh, number one, super, super comfortable. Number two, uh, they run tiny. Normally I'm a US 9, um, but in European shoes, I normally have to go for a size 40, which I did, especially in French shoes. It's my, it's been my experience that French shoe sizes tend to run smaller than Italian ones. Let me know if you guys, if that's all, also been your experience as well. Um, so Givenchy being a French brand, I ordered them from the real real in a size 40 and they were like an entire size too small. I had to go up to a 41 in these and I only wear a nine. So um, I will link some of these down below because the real real does have some available. I imagine people return them a lot because they run so freaking small. Um, I sized up by, I mean, two sizes or one size depending on where you see sizing up. I don't know, let, actually, let me ask you guys that. If you always wear a 40 in a certain brand, but you normally wear a nine, is that sizing up or is a 40 just your size? Is that like a philosophical question? I don't know. Anyways, a couple of things that are great about these. Number one, super, super comfortable. They're not noisy like most clogs should be. Very high, but not like in a way where you feel like you're just doing too much in the daytime. I mean, me, I'm kind of tall, so I do kind of tower over people when I wear them, but I'm into that, so. <laughs> one of the other really great parts is that I don't love getting my nails done and that's one of those things that I love saving money on. So with these, you're like, you're practically wearing a sandal, but you are pretty much obscured from showing off the pedicure. So these are great like in between pedicure sandals for when you want to do that. These were my little birthday gift to myself and we'll see how much I wear them because I don't, I do wear a lot of black, but just trying to Trying to balance these into my wardrobe at the moment has been very, it's proven very, very difficult, but I love these shoes enough that I'm gonna center outfits around them. Run. So that was the rundown and update on some of my last luxury purchases. Last year wasn't, obviously wasn't a big year for me as far as like additions to my wardrobe, um, but I will say that the lifestyle adjustment happened at, happened at a time where I sort of have covered all of my bases in my handbag collection and wardrobe and also wasn't liking the new styles and designs. So I didn't, so I definitely didn't feel like I had, I was like depriving myself of anything by not buying any luxury goods. I actually am going to have a video pretty soon uh, coming up about how to get there in your wardrobe, get there in your handbag collection where you're not needing anything. Um, I think my collection is pretty well rounded, so stay tuned for that. Hope you guys enjoyed this little update video, um, as well as my new Givenchy shoes. Always comment any requests, anything you'd like to see from me down below. I've got a ton of new stuff coming up for this year and um, I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.